Hello guys, yep, it's me once again. And today I'm gonna give you a quick insight into basic material science. If you don't understand the difference or the meaning of ductility, brittleness, resilience, toughness, rigidity, strength in a the material, then this video is for you. If you struggle understanding the stress strain curve, then keep on watching. So let's get started. First of all, we need to look at the very important property of materials, the Young's modulus. It's the fingerprint of every material in the universe. If a material hasn't got any Young's modulus, it's simply not a material so what is it it's a ratio a ratio between stress and strain well to understand this ratio we need to define what stress and strain is imagine someone pulls on your arm the more pain you get the more stress is in your arm equivalently if your arm is big you will experience less stress in your arm than if your arm is the size of a spaghetti so stress in a material varies with the size of it and the force applied to it in physics we define stress as force over section of course when pulling on an object this object elongates equivalently the longer the object, the longer is the elongation. In physics, we define strain as the elongation over the original length. The Young's modulus therefore gives you an idea of how stiff a material can be in relation to an applied force. All right, so now that we have a basic understanding of stress, strain and the Young's modulus, we can now look at the stress strain curve. This graph is usually divided in two regions, the elastic region and the plastic region. Let's first only focus on the elastic region. Since the Young's modulus is equal to stress over strain, it is represented by the slope of the curve in the elastic region. The steeper the slope, the greater the Young's modulus. This brings us to the first notion, rigidity. Rigidity is directly correlated to the Young's modulus. The greater the Young's modulus, the greater the rigidity. However, it shouldn't be mistaken for strength. Strength is the maximum stress a material can withstand in its elastic region. So for example, the material represented by the green curve is more rigid but less strong than the material represented by the red curve. As we can see, its slope is steeper but its maximum elastic stress is smaller. So say you want to build something very flexible which does not need to withstand much stress. Which of these two materials would you take? The answers are in the description of the video. The next notion I will explain is resilience. Resilience is the ability of a material to absorb a certain energy in the elastic region. This property is represented by the area under the curve. The larger the area, the greater the resilience. You need to design a device which needs to absorb a lot of energy. Which material would you choose? Material 1 represented by the blue curve or material 2 represented by the orange curve. Now, let's get back to the whole graph and talk about the notion of ductility. Ductility in material science is defined as the degree of elongation at complete rupture. So between these two materials represented by the green and blue curve, which one is more ductile? Or if I tell you that brittleness is the exact opposite of ductility, which one is less brittle? And last but not least, toughness. Toughness is the ability of a material to absorb a certain energy before complete rupture. This property is represented by the area under the whole curve. Between these two curves, which material is tougher? This was a basic insight into different terms used in material science, which many people struggle with. I hope you enjoyed and learned. See you soon, guys. Bye.